Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Look Forward. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Brad. I wonder if we've retained any of our new conservative leading audience that we've had <laughs> <laughs> the last couple of weeks. Well, we're going to get right into it because we're about to lose them if they're still here. Um, <laughs> MAGA nutcase attacks Paul Pelosi, an 82-year-old elderly man. And no, they weren't gay lovers um, <laughs> because you guys are weirdly... I think you're more obsessed with dude on dude action than gay men. Um, so every, yeah, every, every conspiracy that they uh, that they like to fashion seems to tie back to it for some reason, or, or just or just some weird just some weird sex shit. Like every conspiracy they have to do, like it always ties back to weird sex shit. Well, I mean, if if I know the right wing as well as I think I do, and I do, they're really <laughs> into having sex with other men, having sex with other men, and hitting each other with hammers at the same time. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, they're into that. Um, but it, on a very serious note, um, husband of uh, Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Paul Pelosi, uh, was attacked in their home uh, at like two in the morning, I think it was, mm-hmm. um, by this this MAGA fanatic um, who broke a glass door um, and broke into their house uh, looking for Nancy Pelosi. Uh, his name was David um, De Pop. He's 42. He's the same age as I am, which is crazy, right? Mm. Like, it's just crazy to imagine someone my age being like, yep, this is this is the next move for me. This is, this is what I'm going to try to do. Um, and he is said to have had, like, zip ties with him and yeah. duct tape with him. Um, when he found Paul Pelosi, he attacked him, hit him in the head with a hammer, like, I think something like 12 Fra- times. Fra- fractured fractured his skull. Yeah, he actually had to have um, – uh, uh, brain surgery, um, mm-hmm. but I think he's going to be okay. Um, luckily, Paul Pelosi was able to like call the police and then like leave the line open to get mm-hmm. police there. Um, and of course, Nancy Pelosi, she was not in San Francisco at the time; she was in D.C. Um, and he was apparently yelling, "Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy?" So this was clearly mm-hmm. an attempt to go after Nancy Pelosi. Correct. Think- yeah, that, that's 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 the thing that is important to call out immediately is that this was this was at, he was looking for Nancy Pelosi like that that was his intended target, um, and that Paul Pelosi just happened to be there. Right. So. So. I think I think the part that we're missing in the reporting is the big A word. This is an assassination attempt. Not not to hear him tell it, apparently, according to his uh, grand plan that, that he had. Uh, that oh, he had really? What was his grand plan? I hadn't heard. So, so he, he told police and because and, apparently this guy is like talking like crazy to, to the to the cops or to, you know, to the FBI about the shit. And he, he told police that he was uh, his plan was if to, to if Nancy Pelosi was there to tie her up to a chair and he said, make her quote speak the you know tell the truth which is you know with with the whatever republican nonsense that he stole he the election the or whatever dumb right thing. and if she didn't tell the truth that he was going to break her kneecaps with the hammer and then that way she'd have to be wheeled in to to like the house to congress and it would it would serve as like a reminder to all the other democrats basically that we, if you lie about you know the, the 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 crazy stuff the democrats are doing that that's that that's what could happen to you that that was his that was his plan thing. Now again, don't think it would have gone perfectly to plan, even if she was there. I'm pretty sure he would have probably ended up killing her or coming close to it in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, the reason why I would argue uh to that point is that he hit Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer right. multiple times. He didn't try to kneecap him. He didn't try to Paul Pelosi's eighty two years old. Mm-hmm. Like, look, I don't care how out of shape David the pop is you should be able to take down an 82 year old without a hammer. Pretty sure <laughs> yeah. it wouldn't be that hard to like, just kind of generally overpower someone who's quite literally almost double your age. Right. Um, you hit him in the head with a hammer because you're a vicious psychopath yeah. and that, and like, you don't give a shit about whether he lived or died. You don't hit an elderly man in the head and be like, well, maybe he'll be okay. No, you try to kill him. Like you did, and and you probably were pulled off of him, or or he fought back enough to save his own life. That's it. Um, but he was charged with kidnapping, um, mm-hmm. amongst many other things like elderly endangerment, and you know just general a- attempted assault, murder, attempted <laughs> murder, right? Yeah, attempted um, assault on a federal official, 
Yeah, that, that kind of shit. So. Right. But I think this should be I think it should be classified as an, an assassination attempt. I mean, I think it's I think it's dangerous not to. Right? Yeah. Like I think it's actually dangerous not to throw the entire book at this guy because shit like this, and we'll talk about, it's not the only thing like this is happening. Like yeah. there's more shit happening. Um but the, I want to talk about the right wing's response to this. Of course, because well, I mean, you you had to know. So, like the the right wing's inability to just kind of like do the sensible thing right. in times like this never staggers to amaze me. Because you would think this would be like a slam dunk. Yes, yeah, is a layup. Come out here, look like decent people. You know, talk about how, you know, like, uh, this is, you know, I can't believe this happened. We completely denounced this. It's really fucked up. Like, you know, this this isn't the way we should be doing stuff in this country, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Much like Nancy Pelosi did. And and because they because, a lot you know, they a lot of them tried to pivot to like, oh, you know, I would, remember when Steve Scalise got shot? I'm like, yeah, Democrats weren't out here celebrating. Democrats weren't out here like, well, you know, that's what you get when you try to take when you try to raise taxes on people like, like that. Yeah, no one ever know. said that. That's, no. Yeah, like, you know, it's fucked up. Like, Nancy Pelosi, like, her statement, like, right after that, when she gave an interview, was, like, no, she's, like, it's in the family. Like, like, like you know, we're, you know, we're beside ourselves, and this is complete. Like, she she forcefully denounced what happened without any equivocation whatsoever. And like, these people. No, Democrat, like, no Democrats right. were like, cool, how's your hip, Steve Scalise? Like, no one said right. shit like that. And and again, a, a handful of Republicans did, like Mitch McConnell, I think, was probably the most notable one that just forcefully denounced what happened and, and didn't, you know, equivocate in any way, shape, or form because Mitch McConnell's not a psycho. He's a craven son of a bitch, but he's not a fucking psychopath. That is the one thing you will always find with him, is yeah. that anytime there is shit like this, he is never the guy to be like, like let's rub it in type of shit like right. in violence and stuff like he just does it and i and i don't think it's because he's such a like like you said like he's not a morally great person he's not yeah. he's a piece of shit about everything <laughs> else he really is but i think what he realizes is that you don't want to be on the record saying shit no. like that like hey, sir, why dude? and so like i said the sensible thing would be just to come out here equip, uh, you know unequivocally denounce it and and kind of rally you know behind the this not happening but here's the problem is that secretly behind closed doors or for or fuck for fuck's sake in front of closed doors because they don't seem abashed at this at all they're not at all upset that this happened not even a little bit so the yeah. the immediate pivot was to oh you know what do you expect in fucking crime laden san francisco with all these new bail laws for now forget the fact that chesa boudin was you know voted out a recall like five months ago in San Francisco and the new uh, attorney and the new attorney general that came in there revoked all those bail laws. So, like they're not in effect anymore. Plus again, this guy not out on bail. Like he was just a fucking dude that, just that guy. yeah, fucking crazy. So they're like, Oh, you're Democrat cities and, and crime. And you gotta, you know, you expect stuff like this to happen and this, that, or the other thing. And then it's amazing once, how it doesn't happen anywhere else. Yeah, I know. Right? Anyone else. Yeah. There's no red Republicans or anything. It never happens to them. Right. And then, and then once, once it was, you know, and then they, they also tried to like paint him as like, no, it's actually like a left winger that's attacking her. Like, okay. Like he, this dude has a fucking blog on the internet that you can read that you can see the kind of shit that he's posting and the kind of shit that he's, that, that he believes and that, and that radicalized him. So, but sure. Call him a left wing crazy. And then once this interview came out with the cops that, that he did where he's, you know, talk, he's more than happy to talk about all this crazy shit. And the reasons why he did this and stuff like that. Like, he wants to be famous. So, like, he's like, yeah, like, absolutely I did this. And, you know, Pizza Gate's real and all sort of shit. Like, they're scrambling now. Like, they don't know fucking, they, they don't know what to, they don't know where to pivot next. Because, like, as usual, in situations like this, where they take a party line that's unreasonable, and then it gets pulled out from under them, usually by Donald Trump, of all people. But, like, in this yeah. case, just the facts of the case did it. Where do they go from here? Like you, like gay you can't lover. go anywhere. Gay lover. Yeah. Well, uh, well, that, and that was the crazy shit that that, that came was out too. right off, right off the bat. Gay lover. Like, yeah. Like, and and not, and it's one thing for shit like that to be, you know, develop on the fringe of right wing right. politics. Like you expect right. that crazy shit. Not helpful uh, when the new CEO of Twitter decides to amplify that out to, you know, yep. the millions he, of people that follow he pulled, him. And look, and then he pulled it back. 
which is useless, did. which is fucking useless, right? Of course he did. You shouldn't run a platform where you're like your first day on the job, you push disinformation. Right. <laughs> like you should oh, be. Oh, we'll, oh, we'll get to him later in the show. Don't oh, you worry. Don't oh, you worry, Elon. listeners. Oh, <laughs> we, 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 we have a opinion article in bang on or bullshit. That is. Yeah. We don't like, it, it, there's no debate. <laughs> there's no debate. Like, yes, this article is but, fucking. But not, on. not, not only that though, but like you have the worst fucking fringes of right wing politics out here, like kind of celebrating on this shit. Like, yeah. like fucking Glenn Youngkin, who's supposedly a moderate, supposedly a centrist, like supposedly right. like he's an okay Republican is that you're saying, Oh, like, you know, that's terrible what happened, but we're going to send Nancy, Nancy Pelosi home. This, this to fall. take it's care of be, her husband, right? It's gonna be fucking great. Um, Don Jr. is out here on Instagram, fucking yeah. you know, cracking up about you know people posting like a, a picture of, like tidy whities with a bloody hammer on it and shit like that. He's like, oh, look at my Paul Pelosi Halloween costume. We snort this whole line of cocaine that I've got in front of me because this is fucking great. L- um, line, line, yeah, li- you know, <laughs> drop an S behind <laughs> that, my man. Oh, ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, me? Fucking. You know, Kari Lake's out here, like, oh, you know, yeah. they, you know, they say we can't protect schools, but I get, you know, they both they says we can't protect schools. We can protect schools. She can't protect her own home, and and that got a good laugh. That that got such a laugh that the that the person that was asking her questions during that like was panel was like literally like covering his face with the folder. He thought it was so funny. So that's and, that's and, what we're dealing with. And, and again, can you imagine a situation where this happens to? Let, let, let's say um, Kevin McCarthy. We're Kevin, McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. Right. Just, like just, some, just like some crazy left wing yeah. hammer wielding psychopath breaks into Kevin McCarthy's house and smashes it on the head of his wife a number of times. Mm-hmm. Can you even can any Republican anywhere truly believe that the left would be like not even the left right because they're going to be mm-hmm. like people who are going to be like hey, sure. who gives a fuck right but can you truly believe that democrats like in office would be like making jokes about it or running for office yeah you can't you can't you can't believe that there, there's there's no argument of that and again we talked about the steve scalise thing in the beginning we have proof because democrats quite literally did not right. do that right and uh, and and for the sake of for the sake of argument for the for the sake of the of the of the argument let's say that a democrat let's say that a prominent democrat did do that imagine what the what the outrage from the right wing media apparatus would look like it would be ridiculous like yeah. and you and you have democrats coming out here denouncing other right and that, but that's what that was the point i was just going to make imagine where the fucking left would go they'd be like right. yo what the fuck is your problem that shit's not cool yeah. like because we don't do that shit that's not who we are, right? Like, so look, I I think I think the Paul Pelosi thing is it is a canary in the coal mine of a very serious thing, right? This idea of denouncing Democrats, calling them you know baby killers and all this other shit, and pushing well, that narrative to the right wing, like mainlining it in to the craziest people in this fucking country, and then you have this kind of you know you have this well, kind of reaction. So here's the thing we've we've talked a lot of a lot on the show about like war and and conflict and stuff like that in the world and kind of the 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 behavioral aspects behind that and the things that militaries do and then and then militias do to train soldiers to be more effective and one of the things that they do is they work overtime to dehumanize their opponents essentially they 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 work overtime to make sure that you beat any humanity out of them so that when it comes time to pull the trigger you don't hesitate when it comes time to fly a drone and 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 drop a bomb on somebody you don't hesitate to do it because they are less than human so it's so it's not a big deal this has been the republican playbook with democrats especially for the last seven years but really for the last i don't know 20 years yeah. Maybe not that many, like when, for, starting from basically when Obama came in office. This has been this has been the Republican playbook to basically other the Democrats, to basically subhumanize them, to talk about them as if they're evil incarnate, as if they're less than human. I mean, I mean, you know, again, like like Republicans use the term Democrat like like a slur almost, like like derisively, whereas you, yeah. you know, like really accentuate the rat 
on that part. You know what I mean? Like all these Democrat politicians and, and this or the other thing. And so what do you expect to happen? Like, like all, and, and all you need is for someone who is not quite all there, which obviously this guy isn't like you know, no one in the right fucking mind would you know try to break into, you know, a, a Congress person's house and, and beat the shit out of their significant other with a fucking hammer. So obviously he's not all there, but there are people like this on your side. There are people that are going to believe the things that you're saying whole cloth. Yeah. And this is what happens. Like, 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 and, and that's the thing that kills me is that to suggest that the Republic and, and the Republicans don't want to suggest this because they don't want any culpability, but to suggest that they're not to blame that their rhetoric didn't at least like light the spark for this right. happening is completely disingenuous. It is. And it, in like, no one paying attention could possibly believe that. There are right wingers who go, yeah, we probably shouldn't have said that part. <laughs> like, I mean, maybe they don't admit it, like, you know, but in their heart of hearts, they know there's certain shit that's been said that's just unacceptable. Like, you don't, you don't do that. You don't, you don't make ads of like, we're going rhino hunting and shit like that, right? right. Like, that was Republicans running against other Republicans, right? What was that in Virginia, I believe? As, as, uh, um, I think Missouri, if I'm not Missouri, saying. right? Like, yeah. yeah, that was Republicans talking about other Republicans as far as like running in a primary. But that type of rhetoric of it's not just othering Democrats and it ultimately does become that, but it's just othering any opponent that you have. Yeah. That everyone again, everyone who is running against you, there the the entire point is like if you're the most extreme person, then everyone else is just not as much of a patriot. They're not as much of a Republican right. or an American or a fucking liberal or Republican or whatever. Like, but it's all, but it's, it's all focused on the right, right? Like you don't this, hear liberals this, doing it. It's not it. like, it's not like this is a new playbook either, by the way. No, it's like not, 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 not to, not to hyperbolize and go to the most extreme example of this, but this is the fucking game plan with Hitler against the Jews. Like he, he basically. Wow. Like, wow. Hitler, Brad. Wow. We're going really yeah, big here. But I'm, I'm just but saying it's, 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 it's the lowest, it's the lowest, it's the lowest hanging fruit. Like he's like, man, like shit really sucks now. You know, like, like things are tough. Like, you know, fucking we've, we've got our ass kicked in the last war. You know whose fault it was? It was the Jews. Like they're the reason for all your suffering. So that that way, when you start fucking rounding up in the concentration caps and fucking killing them by the millions, the people in Germany are just like, yeah, this is cool. They, they, you know, this, this is no problem because like these, these, these people aren't human. Right. And by the way, spoiler alert. That's what American Jews are afraid is happening right now. Right. Like, I've got a friend of mine who's Jewish and he's just like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. and he is truly concerned. And, and it's like, yeah, because you hear the same fucking rhetoric from like millionaire fucking right. <laughs> rich, rich people going, yeah, I don't know. Maybe these Jews are a problem. But it's I mean, like, and, and again, like, you, I, I, I feel like, I feel like you have to quote this weekly or at least biweekly at this point. But that train's never late to, to, to quote Chris Rock. Never, yes, ever. Yeah. Like, never, ever. So, <laughs> hating on black people and Jews, that, that train is never late. And it's not. <laughs> it's not. And, and it's, it's a real fucking problem. So, look, the Paul Pelosi story is, is a lot of things, right? Like, and, mm -hmm. that, and that's, that's the scary part of it. It is, it is a type of domestic terrorism. Mm hmm. It is this othering of Democrats. This is the this is direct rhetoric. It is the right wing openly admitting that political violence is a fucking okay with them. Mm -hmm. and well, it, and that and that was the interesting thing is that is that the the first pivot that they made among everything is they were trying to be like, you don't know that this was political. Now, of course, again, got completely undermined by the dude once he got to the once he got to the cops. But like they were trying to treat this as like some random, like a random crime essentially because they knew that it was political. And so they were trying to distract from that right. as much as possible. Oh, it, it just so happens to be the speaker of right. the houses. Uh, and, house. and then he was like, where's Nancy? Where's Nancy? Is he's fucking, you know, like, fuck. He knew. House, God but, damn it. It was, yeah. wasn't a random break in. Right. Yeah, like, so, but all of those things are true. Yeah. All of those things are true. And again, this is what they want. Now, I'm not saying everybody in, in on the right wants this, but there is a large enough contingent on the right to for this to be concerning, to be really concerning. And again, the reactions are concerning. I saw I saw an article today. Um what is her name? Uh uh she went she was on Fox News and then she went to uh like NBC. Oh, Megan, Megan, uh, Megan Kelly. 
Megan Kelly, that fucking yeah. uh, asshole. Um, she's like, well, there's, you know, there's something about this. It just doesn't smell right. You know, but they're, they're hiding something. I just don't know what it is. Or, or here's an idea, Megan. You're a journalist. Uh, you facts, use facts. Don't just <laughs> speculate and just say there's something you, you don't know what it is, but there's something not right. No, no. It's you were a lawyer. <laughs> you were a lawyer. You don't run cases by going, well, your honor, I smell a rat. <laughs> like that's you know, not I, a legal I know, argument. I know, I know, I know we didn't prove our case and the prosecution did a great job, but isn't there something just in the back of your mind that just tells you that this something about this just isn't right? What do you think? Is that, is that, is that how she, is that how she argued, uh, yeah, what the fuck argued legal about? strategy? So. Like, what are you talking about? You base it on the facts that are available. And we keep getting new facts, like 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 it's. And been this dude is like, no, I'm facts. trying to kill these people. Or I'm trying to bash right. their fucking kneecaps in because of who they are. How much fucking shit do you need? Well, they're they they were lovers, right? Is that it? Why why do you keep going to that? Like it's a bit <laughs> weird. It's a bit weird. And like, what love lovers quarrel ends um, at two in the morning with people hitting each other in the head with hammers and right. and having zip ties and duct tape. But but again, like this is no. the natural progression. <laughs> this is like this is the natural progression of shit. Like you know, from my cold dead hands, you know, fucking Charlton Heston sitting up there talking about right. guns, and 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 you know, all the freedoms that they're just like, oh, Democrats are trying to take this freedom and that freedom. Meanwhile, Republicans are stripping freedoms from individuals left and right. Yeah, but those as, are you know, those are the individuals they don't care about. You know, like oh, of yeah, naturally, yeah, they're not they're not the white the white men. So you know, right. fuck fuck anyone else. But that kind of rhetoric snowballs like like if you don't tamp it down or if you don't fucking snuff it out immediately and you just kind of let that shit out there then it becomes more permissible so then the next guy says and the next guy says and the next guy and, and it just gets more and more extreme and and like you said it ticks up so yeah so no i look i think people should be deeply concerned about what happened to paul pelosi whether you like paul pelosi or not whether you like nancy pelosi or not for, whether for you're the record, on the not a big paul pelosi left. fan no, not, not a, no, not at all. I think that good. I think yeah. that guy was definitely. I think they were definitely making tons of money off of insider trading information. Like no yeah. shit. Like a couple of weeks ago, I'm pretty sure we talked about Paul Pelosi and how he got fucking busted for that shit. Not a fan. I don't think that should be allowed. I think they should have to give all that money back, and I think he should not be allowed to trade stocks. Still, don't think you should hit him in the head with a fucking. No, dollar. no. It seems seems a bit extreme. Yeah, seems Sorry. a bit extreme. Um, next up, um. Yeah, look, there's a little bit more proof. You know, if you say, oh, is this guy really a MAGA guy? How do you know, right? All right, well, yeah, here's how we know. Um, apparently, um, a guy who works for him uh, was like, look, man, um, this guy's name is uh, Cicerella. Frank, uh, Frank Cicerelli. F- yeah, Frank Cicerelli. He works with him. He was like, quote, uh, he was completely caught up in the, in the fantasy, in the MAGA fantasy. Um, Basically, like, he, he says something like, if you ever got him talking about politics, like, oh, here you go. If you got him talking about politics, it was all over. Because he was re- he really believed in the whole MAGA, Pizzagate, stolen election. You know all of it. All the way down the line. If you go to Fox News, if you go to the internet, and you look at QAnon, you know he, ha- he had all of these theories. There you go. There you go. He ain't no fucking leftist, dude. No leftist believes in Pizzagate and is a big Fox News person and believes in QAnon. I guess there's like one idiot out there, but 99.9% of the people who believe that are all right. Well, there, well, well, as and we they're know, there's like there's some leftists that push so hard that they make their way to the other side of the horseshoe. But right. they're like, well, maybe this Pizzagate <laughs> thing is right. It's not. <laughs> Please stop saying that. Right. Um, but yeah, so he was all in for that shit. Um. But here, but here, but here's here's the part that pisses me off about about this whole about the Republican response to this to this ordeal, is that again just because of the environment that we're in, because of how you know polarized the electorate is, how every election's a national election, we're we're a week away from the midterms, and none of these assholes who came out here who fucking you know spiked the football and 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 you know made their jokes and this and other thing, none of them are going to pay a tangible price. No, for this, not in the electorate, not from any kind of censure from from any you know oversight body or things like that. Like none of these people are gonna. It, it doesn't matter. Like it just kind of goes out there and it happens, and we and we and we you know we 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 cast derision on them, and, and then we we all move on. Like like there's no there's no lasting effects. Um, 
for that. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know what I mean? Like that, like society is very different than it was uh, many, many years ago. We're saying shit like this would get you, you know, kicked out of the club for lack of a better term. Right. But you know, that that's the part that's, that's the most frustrating is that people can be their worst selves and not, not, not only are they not made to pay a price for it, but they're actually applauded for it. They're actually yeah. uh, held higher up for it. Yeah. I, 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 I don't personally get it. Um, I wish that I did. Um, I, I think that you have to come down hard, like, and not just, mm-hmm. not just on this guy. You do have to come down hard on him, but we have to come hard on this rhetoric and the way that you do that as our country stands right now, yo vote, God damn it. Right. Vote, vote these guys into a situation where when they wake up after this midterm election, they're like, I thought there was supposed to be a red wave. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh shit. Like the Paul Pelosi thing should be such a fucking firestorm moment. In my opinion, like you've got abortion rights being taken away. You've got unequivocal political violence. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you in the next story, more of that, right? Unequivocal mm-hmm. political violence. You have a party who is on the cusp of possibly taking over who have no plans and are, are quite literally doing nothing but pushing conspiracy theories. That's it. That's their only argument at this point. They want to get rid of social security and Medicaid. They want to gut all of that shit. Make them pay for it. You want to talk shit, talk shit, get hit. Like, and I don't mean physically, I mean at the fucking polls or excuse me at at the, at the voting booth. That's how you win this. They should they should wake up the next day and be like, "Oh damn, not only did we not take the Senate, we didn't even we didn't even get the house." Mm-hmm. Make them pay. Make them lose fucking seats. Make them pay for the shit they said. Even if a Republican didn't say that shit, but they didn't denounce that shit, make them pay for it. Make them pay for it. If a Democrat grabbed a couple of butts in a comedy skit, we made them fucking pay for it and made them leave. These guys are like, "Isn't it funny how that guy almost died?" <laughs> no, like we make jokes about a bunch of shit, right? But never true political violence, right? Like what the fuck, man? I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step further. We, we openly wish for the death of very many political figures, but of natural causes. Like we don't want to go, we don't want someone to go fucking murder Donald Trump. No, like no. we want him to have a heart attack and die on the toilet. Which is inevitable for him in the way he yes. is. Right? <laughs> but that's not, that, that's not something we're doing. We're not, ex- we're not asking for an external force. Just the well, the external force of how fast he can shove hamburgers yes. down his throat, but that's on him. That's his doing. I don't and, want and, to and, see. And I don't want. And and look, as much as I, yeah. I hate Donald Trump, but I would never want someone to assassinate him. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I, I just wouldn't. Like, no, fuck that. That that again. That creates a situation that makes voting impossible. Mm-hmm. If we're killing politicians or we're trying to attack them, it is there is only two options here. Right. Maddo made this point this week. There are only two options here. There is voting and there is violence. That's it. And when you've lost voting, that's all there is, is pressure for violence. And guess what? If the right is like, well, we'll just go that route and we'll get no pushback. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong (laughs) because it'll come back the other way. Yeah, it will. Like, I don't know why people think, oh, the people on the left don't own guns. Okay, that's Steve Scalise. Yes, the fuck they do. Right? Like, you don't want that. I don't want that. Nobody wants that shit, man. Doing this and giving the fucking A-OK side smirk like, it's fine, guys. Do what you want. It will blow up in your face. It will blow up in your face, and it's not what you want. I'd rather beat you at the ballot box, man. I don't want to have a fucking bloody fight in the streets over shit like that. I don't want to wake up and it's like fucking five Republicans have been attacked. I don't want that shit. Yeah. Nobody wants that shit. It's a bad fucking idea. So you denounce it because you that's just what you you should do as a human being, not as a Republican, not as a Democrat or a liberal or conservative or anywhere in the middle because you're a fucking human being. It's not cool to do. Right, but it's but it's but again, also for the reason that like you just mentioned because escalation is inevitable. Like it, it well, absolutely trust, trust, is. trust me if if enough fucking democratic politicians get attacked or 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 worse there's going to be some crazies on the left that start fucking doing this shit to the Republican politicians. Absolutely. De- never, don't, don't you fucking sleep on it for a second. Oh, they're, they're all soy boy cucks. Okay. <laughs> all right, man. What wouldn't bank on it. Wouldn't bank on it. That's a bad idea. 
like, look, it's just a bad idea. Like, you guys, at the same time, you talk about Antifa as the scariest organization in the world. Okay. Like, just, like, realize that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. There is. And I just, like, denounce that shit. Just come out and be like, look, man, this shit is not cool. We don't stand with that shit. We don't stand with this guy. Fuck this guy. That's not what we're here for. Let's beat the Democrats at the ballot box, not with fucking violence. This is stupid. But, it, but, but again, to, to, the point, but to, to the point that we've made over and over again, what are, what are they fighting for? What, how are they fighting at the ballot box? They don't have ideas. They don't have a platform. And again, that doesn't mean that they won't win. That doesn't mean that they still won't get enough people to come out and vote for them because, like I said, the, 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 the like both sides, I mean, this entire country is made of fucking lemmings who are just, you know, voting for party at this point, not actually paying attention to policy positions. Right. On but both they sides, don't have, I, on both sides. Probably. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, I wasn't trying to say that that was a right wing exclusive issue. Trust me. There are plenty of people in the left wing that are just voting for D's next, yeah. next to people's name. But, uh, but Republicans can't have that fight, though. Like they, they can't come out and yeah. fight. What are they going to say? Inflation's high. Gas is high. Like that, I mean, Unfortunately, that base level fucking, you know, uh, argument somehow works because, you know, people care about their pocketbooks more than anything else in this world. Um, They're free. But, right. But they but, you know, but that they don't have the ability to have that intellectual fight. Right. Agreed. On, on, on the grounds that we normally battle these things out in. So, yeah, that's, so, and that's why and that's why they give violence a wink and a nod. You know what I mean? That's why they don't come out and unequivocally condemn it. Yeah. And I, and I can't like I. I, I really hope somebody doesn't feel the need to retaliate going from the left. I really hope not. But I think you're right. If if this continues, I think people are going to be like, you know what? Okay. This is this is what we're doing. Yep. Like, all right. Um, next up, candidate running uh, for Senate, or excuse me, running for the state House seat, um, attacked in uh, Fayette County. So this is Fayette County in Pennsylvania. Um Candidate running for the state house seat uh, called nine nine one one after reportedly being assaulted uh, at his Fayette County home. Democrat Richard Ringer said he had been he was bloodied and knocked unconscious by an attacker in his backyard earlier Monday morning. Uh, Ringer is running for an open seat in the state house. The sixty nine year old told authorities that the suspect hit him uh, in the head ten to twelve times, knocking him out cold. Ringer said his hands were bloodied and his face bruised from the attack. Um, on Friday, the Department of Homeland Security and the FBI issued a, a bulletin warning the political uh, candidates, election officials, and public um, about facing a heightened risk of violence. So here you cool. go. Cool, good, Great. good country we got here. So, so refined. So, uh, so, so above the rest of the, uh, you know, body politic elected uh, governances around the world. As you do. And and again, like I said, like now now this is a thing. Like like you know we've seen it twice now. Now and and I like we were talking about earlier today. Watch like a lot of Repo- like some of the fringe Republicans be like, oh the purge, the purge is happening, and they'll fucking you know have a have a have a neat nickname for it that they can talk about on on Newsmax and Fox News and shit like that that they yep. can you know they can run they can with. Talk, so. yep. Again, blowback is a son of a bitch. Be real careful, man. Just be real fucking careful. Um, all right, Brad, let's put on, let's put our, let's put, well, you need to put your Steve Harvey, uh, suit on cause it's time to go to church. <laughs> Look, we got a clip of, uh, Baltimore born, uh, pastor Jamal Bryant. Oh, he's that, from Baltimore. I didn't even know that. This, this, yes, this, this was like, this, this is, was like Obama's dude, right? Uh, no, 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 I wouldn't say who, that. Who, who no? Well, who, who was who was the guy that they that they tried to associate him with that was like controversial or something? Oh, Reverend Wright. Oh, okay. That that go. was he's in Illinois. Yeah. Spoiler gotcha. alert. Uh, that that sermon that they got really mad at Reverend Wright. I've listened to that thing in its entirety. Uh, Reverend Wright was not incorrect. <laughs> he was one hundred percent accurate in what he said. Uh, I will stand by that. Most people, all they heard was the goddamn America thing, and they were like, "I hate this guy." I was like, "Nah, yo, you should listen to what he said because he was talking about like endless wars and shit like that." Like that was actually kind of a fire sermon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. And even at the time, I'm an atheist. I'm like, this guy's making a lot of good points. I can remember this, maybe. Maybe I should go back. Um, speak, speak, speaking of atheists thinking that uh, pastors making good points. Yeah. So incidentally, incidentally, yeah. here's a here's a little behind the scenes about our network. Jamal Bryant, Brad, 
is in mm. fact the pastor who asked Micah to give two hundred and eighty dollars. <laughs> And then he always tells that story, and he was like, well, "That's the price of a PlayStation. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna donate two hundred eighty dollars to church. So yeah, he used to be a pastor in Baltimore. Uh, okay. back, yeah, back in the day. Uh, then he moved down to Atlanta because he was like, "There's more money here." That's right. So I'm gonna tell you a funny story about Jamal Bryant after this. Um, but this is Jamal Bryant um, down at his church um, in Atlanta talking about Herschel Walker. So here you go. Ladies and gentlemen, when the Republican Party of Georgia moved Herschel Walker from Texas to Georgia so that he could run for Senate, it's because change was taking too fast in the post antebellum South. The state had been flipped blue, and there are some principalities that were not prepared for a black man and a Jewish man to go to Senate at the exact same time. So they figured that they would delude us by picking somebody who they thought would in fact represent us better with a football than with a degree in philosophy. They thought we were so slow, that we were so stupid, that we would elect the lowest caricature of a stereotypical broken black man as opposed to somebody who is educated and erudite and focused. Y'all ain't ready for me today. Since Herschel Walker was 16 years old, white men been telling him what to do telling him what school to go to, where to live, where to eat, where to buy a house, where to run, where to sit down, where to sleep, where to pay for abortions, where to buy a gun. And they, you think they not going to tell him how to vote? In 2022, we don't need a walker. We need a runner. We need somebody who going to run and tell the truth about January 6th. We need somebody who going to run and push for the cancellation of student loan debts. We need somebody who going to run and make the former president respond to a subpoena. We don't need a walker. We need somebody who will be steadfast unmovable, always abounding, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Georgia, I need you to know, the slave Negroes y'all are used to don't live here no more. We can think for ourselves, function for ourselves, and vote for ourselves. Why? Because we don't need a walker. God damn! <laughs> That's a hell of a, that's a hell of a speech, man. Look, look, I used to go to church all the way up until I was nineteen. Ah, I got a little, I got a little feeling back, Brad. I was like, oh, okay, it's like, all right, oh shit. Um, that was awesome. Look, first, first and foremost, let me just make a disclaimer. I don't like religion and politics. I don't like politics from the pulpit. Not a fan of it. One, definitely illegal. Not cool with it <laughs> at all. But since the IRS refuses to call out right wingers for this shit, then it is time for black people and black liberation um, ministries that have been around since Martin Luther King's time and before that. Then it's time to step it up. Maybe maybe that's why he didn't evoke Warnock's name specifically. It's just so that you could kind of skirt, be like, no, I wasn't endorsing a particular candidate. I was just anti-endorsing one of the candidates. Yeah, technically it's fine. <laughs> technically it's fine. He's a great um, order, man. Yeah. Worth worth watching the uh the video on that clip, by the way, as well, because the smash cuts to the audience and, and how they were fielded at speech yeah. was uh, also very incredibly entertaining. So Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Um there will not be a lot of clips of us playing from uh, churches <laughs> around the country on this episode. Uh, my, fa my, episode. My, my, fa my favorite was the woman in the very front who was who you could see on camera when Brian was speaking. They just kept pointing at him on the stage. Basically. Yes. <laughs> yes. Goddamn right. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's a it's a good speech. And it's and it makes the point that I've been made before. This was an idea to trick mm -hmm. black people into voting for somebody who carries a fucking football. Right. Um Joy Ann Reed, I thought, made such a beautifully poignant uh, couple of points about Herschel Walker a couple of weeks ago, where she was like, listen, he fits every stereotype that white people have of us, 
that is acceptable, like is acceptable to them, right? Mm -hmm. Conservatives, not just all white people, but like conservative white people, right? This idea, like he's violent against, you know, he's violent against women, white women specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Violent against them. He has abortions. He's good at sports, but he's not very smart. He's easily gullible. Like, you know, he doesn't talk very well and all this other stuff. Like he fits down the line all he's got all these kids right like all these random kids outside of his marriage like he fits down the line these 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 black um male stereotypes and he's one of them so it's like cool and we can control him so mm-hmm. black people will gravitate towards him because he seems familiar to them right he is he is a useful negro in in this situation right um and i i appreciated i appreciated jamal bryant calling that out and it, and it's clear that the black audience at that very black, very famous <laughs> black church in um, in Atlanta was like, yeah, dude, we got it. Like, they know. Yeah. Because black people are fucking dumb. Like, don't let stereotypes about my people confuse you versus what reality is. Because I, I, I saw this story get posted on Reddit. Mm-hmm. And... All of the comments were like, I don't like the church and politics is because it was in the politics section. They were like, I don't like the church and politics are mixed. And I was like, I agree. Like every comment, every like top tier comment was that. And I said, and I just posted, I said, listen, we all agree on that. Let's talk about what the substance of what he said is, right? This mm-hmm. is, it is a reflection of what the Republican Party thinks of black people, which is why they would put someone up like him. And one guy responded, and I, I considering it's Reddit and considering his comment, I assume that he's white. I don't know, but. Mm-hmm. I know, right? Um, and he said, "Well, you know, it did work in in Alabama with a, you know, um, with Tommy Tuberville." And I was mm-hmm. like, and my response was, well, "They didn't trick us, black people. Yeah. Like <laughs> they, they, they tricked, tricked you guys. You guys. <laughs> right. Republicans. Republicans ran full force into uh, let's elect Tommy Tuberville. Black people weren't like that. That like yeah, y'all, only- y'all, y'all, y'all could have had, y'all could have had Doug Jones again." Who, yeah. who is a perfectly serviceable senator. Right. Um, but like black people don't fall for that shit. You can't just yeah. put a black person up and we just go oh, black, black. Like, cause that's what, that's how the, that's how a racist mind thinks is mm-hmm. that black people only support black people no matter what they do. It's not true. Hey, you want, you want to take a, you want to take a look? Hey, ask black people how they feel about Kanye West right now. <laughs> 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 the vast majority of them are not on board. My guy. The vast majority. There's loons out there who are. But for the most part, black people in mass are kind of like, fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Same 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 with same with Kyrie Irving. Like a lot, a lot of fucking folks are speaking out against him as yep. well for being a for being a crazy head, including uh broad like rights owners, like broad like broadcast partners. Yeah. Like they got Shaq and fucking and Barkley out there on, on TNT and Reggie Miller just like dumping all over him, which is which you do not normally see. No. Uh, from from people that that are that are rights holders for sports leagues. So. No, and look, I saw I saw a um, like a uh, sports commentator. I forget the guy's name. He's a Jewish guy, and he was like, "No, nah, you know, I know I know anti-Semitic shit when I hear it." I was like Rich R- R- Rich Eisen. So yeah, Rich Eisen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And he was just like, "No, this is fucking unacceptable." Like like what you're saying is unacceptable. And when he got called out on that shit, look, Kyrie Irving is, Irving is kind of dumb. Like yeah. kind of really dumb. No, kind kind of very dumb. Yeah, I mean, is he a but, he, but, he, but he's like, he a, but he's like, he's like the worst kind of dumb. Where like he thinks that he's smart and he can't be convinced otherwise. Yeah, he. I believe he's a flat earther too. He right? is. Yeah, that, that 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 that's where that's where his stupidity first uh, first rose to prominence. But Re- Reggie Miller made a good point during the broadcast of the Nets game last night. He was doing color commentary where he's like, you know, it, it's fucked up that. You know when when you know Robert Sarver and Donald Sterling and and these owners were acting at a turn, and deservedly so. Like the the league, like all the players in the league, like united together to speak out against them. He's like, but when it's one, he's like, all of a sudden it's one of your own, and no one's saying shit. No, you, like like, yeah, you, like you guys, it. you guys are staying quiet. So he's like, but it's got it's got to work. It's got to work both ways. Like you can't just speak up when it's ownership or management and and not you know call call players out the task as well. Yeah, no, he's not. He's, he's not wrong. So yeah, I don't. Um, I, I like. I, I think Bryant was great in that in that yeah. moment. And, and again, if we're not going to cut people's tax exempt status, and the right is just going to take advantage of this, I don't believe in um, unilateral disarmament. No, fuck no. that. I mean, it's it's it's, nope. the, it's it's the same shit that we talk about with gerrymandering. Like we we don't functionally believe in gerrymandering. We think it should be outlawed. But if 
the Supreme Court's not going to do anything about it, and if states are still going to gerrymander, well, if you're a blue state, gerrymander the fuck out of your state. Yep. Like I said, like 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 when when Maryland redrew the lines this year, and they're like, well, we could we could have drawn we could have drawn a uh, an eight zero. Maybe seven map. one, right? But 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 we kept it seven one, you know, just to just to make it look fair. Like no, fuck nope. that. Go eight zero. Stop fucking around. Yeah, let them take you to the fucking Supreme Court over it then. Yeah, <laughs> like whatever, man. Oh, like, get, fuck spoiler, spoiler alert: they already did. Didn't do anything. Yeah. Well, that's your problem. So yeah. it's it's like if you're if you're going to allow right wing pastors to say any sort of wackadoodle bullshit um, on politics and and just they like like quite literally like I dare the IRS to do something. All right, cool. So if they're not gonna, if the IRS is not gonna do something, then fuck that, man. Like, go for broke, go for broke. Like, I look, yeah. I got no problem with it. Look, Jamal Bryant and those black churches have major, major sway in um, yeah. in black communities down there, and I got no problem with it because I think largely they do good work. Again, I'm not a religious, I'm not a religious fan, I'm not a religious guy. Um, but if it gets people to the polls, like, look, that sort of black liberation. Um, preaching has again has been around for a long time and it has helped it has helped my people a lot right it's gotten mm-hmm. us to the polls it is, it is given us some serious upward mobility in politics and things like that if those motherfuckers don't want to do anything about it for the right keep going like keep going keep going until they go hey man you guys can't do this all right cool we yeah. can't do it now they can't do it either no all right bet all things all things are fair but i don't believe in univ- um unilateral disarmament no, like, no, well, it's like, there's no, no, no sense in tying an arm behind your back when the other person is no. not going to do it either. Yeah, fuck them. So, so, um, yeah, but I thought that was very good. And, and again, uh, that and and like we've talked about before, like that is also a great way to spur change to happen because the reason why the right gerrymanders is because it's beneficial for them. If more blue states gerrymandered as hard as Republican states do, all of a sudden they'd be in an uproar, and we and we'd be like, oh, like you don't like this gerrymander, huh? And they're like, no, this fucking sucks. Like, cool, let's let's just outlaw gerrymandering then. Like we're they're we're like, happy to do that, no problem. They're like, oh man, yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's but it's like we said before with the electoral college. Like like if if we got to the point where one hundred percent like Democrats were going to win the electoral college all the time. Like like especially if like the interstate compacts were to somehow miraculously get get signed right. into effect, and Republicans could never win an election again, we'd get we'd see the electoral college fold immediately. Like, like, like they'd, they'd be like, no, fuck that. And yeah. then they'd be like, all right, now we got to like, we got to come up with some real policies. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. As it turns out people don't want to vote for us. Yeah. Um, so next up, Texas. I don't know if you've heard this, uh, people <laughs> traveling uh, this holiday season. Texas, you can just have a handgun without a permit now. Cool. Great. Um. This is the biggest state in the union that has passed something like this. Um, I think it's like a fifth of the major cities in the country, largest cities in the country are all in Texas. Like it's, Mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy. Um, they are seeing an increase in people solving sort of petty crimes, uh, Mm -hmm. petty arguments with guns. uh, Right. And, and, and the story, the story that this New York times article that we're pulling this from leads with is there was a guy in Texas, who was being robbed at an ATM in Houston, and he opened fire at the guy. He missed because, you know, we there's no such thing as a marksmanship exam or anything, like when there's permanent carry or anything like that. And he struck and killed a nine-year-old girl who just was sitting in a pickup truck that was passing by. And because he didn't need a permit, and because his lawyer contended that you know, everything that he did was justified under Texas law, despite the outcome. He didn't get indicted for that shit. Like he, he just, he, he walked off. He, he fucking killed a nine year old and walked off scot-free. This is the world we want to live in. This, this is the world Republicans want to live in. It's not the world that I want to live in. I can tell you for sure. I... But, but again, like, like when, when, when you have these like fucking second amendment absolutists out here, who are like, you know, there must be no restriction, this, that, or the other thing, like like carrying guns is a fucking American way of life kind of shit. This is what you get. Like, you can't then be surprised when this is the shit that happens. When 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 you have innocent bystanders getting shot 
because people who don't have training, who don't have discipline, and who aren't permitted to carry these and, and use these weapons in a responsible manner are just allowed to carry guns wherever they want. And 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 it, and it turns otherwise benign in, incidents, which might normally be settled with like a fist fight or, 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 or like a brawl of some kind, into fucking shooting contests, which yeah, they, have a lot more dire results. Typically. Yeah, they had an they had an example in the article. It's a, it's a it's a good article. It, it's pretty long, um, but they had a, a moment where it was like two people got into a shooting match because they were arguing over something that happened on like social media, like or like like some bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like two people got into like an argument, like over a traffic stop, and the guy just like pulled out a gun and started just like firing at someone. Yeah, and and part of this is like. Again, people on the right have this like fucking starry eyed view of like the old West and how they used to settle things at the OK Corral and shit like that. Like, bro, this isn't the 1800s anymore. We live in a society like like this is not fucking how things should be should Where be done. It was right. And and the last thing you want, especially in situations where people are prone to like sudden anger and like seeing red. And stuff like that is easier access to a deadly, deadly weapon. weapon. Like, 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 like it's it's bad enough that people can fucking go off and tee off on somebody and 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 pummel them. Like, okay, fine. Like, you can't really do anything about that. But like, if you have a gun right there on your hip and you can just whip that thing out and shoot it without even thinking about it, how's that? How's that a good idea? How how is that better? And how is that you know how is that better for society for that to be for that to be a thing that can happen? population uh, calling <laughs> i mean I, I mean if it's, it's happening funny. down there I, I i get it and like you and you and i were talking about this and, and andy and basically you know like cops were like oh this is really bad and I'm just like well you know what fuck it i don't even care because you guys are typically you voting you know, right them. right you guys are right wingers you guys support this shit so so then don't get all pikachu face when all of a sudden like like police casualties are going up because everyone has fucking guns everywhere yeah i mean like the idea of guns being allowed in a bar right in a bar are you out of your fucking mind hey guys uh like there's a bar i used to go to it was like a bar restaurant they had a sign over the over the bar that said no politics Mm -hmm. no politics or religious talk right because those are two things that will drive people into fist fights right now, now pack that bar on a Friday night where someone decides they're going to talk politics anyway or talk sports, right? People get mad enough about fucking sports. Or LeBron's the best or fucking MJ's the best. And then you just give those guys guns and like right. seven beers. Or, oh, I'm or sure now it'll work out. You, all, you also have this like fucking myth belief that Republicans have fooled themselves into telling themselves and their constituents that the only thing they can stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So like, you're going to have all these fucking vigilante assholes, like seeing crimes happen and like, Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Like, Oh, I I saw a burglary happen. So I'm going to stop him with a fucking gun. Like that's, that's proportional. Good job. You dummy. Right. Like that's not like, yeah. Or, or like, (laughs) Hey, I mean like they had one story here where they talked about like a guy in the drive through, I think. And he, Mm -hmm. he's in the drive through and then, like he sees in the in the whatever restaurant that it's being robbed, and he shoots through the drive through window, killing or hitting and killing one guy, and then wounding another guy. Like the people who were robbing the place. Like yeah, that guy was like a crack shot. But what if he wasn't? Yeah. Like you're banking on hopeful like what if scenarios. Like what if that guy shot into there and like misread the room. And yeah, he hit one yeah. of the criminals, but the other person was just like a regular dude. And 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 guess or what? Or a kid, like, like the the first example. Like like the the gun organization, like like the gun lobby, wants to push it further. Like right now, the age that this is legal is twenty one. They want to push it to eighteen. They're like, oh, if you're an adult, you should be able to to legally defend yourself with cool. a gun. Like great, yeah, that's, that, real, not- real smart idea. Yeah. yeah, because there's definitely not a because you know they're like, well, you know, you're not allowed to bring a a gun on school grounds, right? Like, like they they were saying that there's like a sh- there's been a sharp increase in people being arrested for gun crimes, like non gun crimes while having a gun, right? Like, right. 
if you, you know, you go certain places, you're not allowed. Like if you go into a school, but you're, you have this no permit carry weapon, well then you could, and you get busted by a cop, you get, you know, that's, that's, that's a violation, but okay. Let's say you push it to 18. Did you not learn from what happened in, in Uvalde? Like you could be 18 in high school. So what happens? A kid brings a handgun and shoots another kid. Well, he can buy a gun legally. He go yeah. buy that gun at Walmart that morning or wherever the fuck. Um, buy gun, buy bullets, walk right into school and shoot someone with it. Then what? Not a mass shooting. Doesn't have to be a mass shooting. Just shoots one kid that he has he has a problem with. Right? When that happens, what what then? We're gonna pretend like that wasn't a big deal until it happens ten more times. I mean, 20 more times. I mean, Jay, how many kids got killed in Uvalde? And it wasn't a big deal to them. It wasn't a big deal. They didn't give a right. shit. Right. I, I just, I, I can't imagine living in that state. Like, but, like, but again, like kind of in, in, in these areas, in these states, the reaction to gun violence is, well, we, <laughs> clearly we need more guns. Like, always. like that's all, that's always the first reaction. It, 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 and it doesn't make sense. Like logically, it doesn't make any fucking sense. No. It doesn't. It, it it just doesn't. I I don't yeah. I don't understand. I I don't understand it. I I just I just don't fucking understand it. <laughs> like, so it is so it is so <laughs> antithetical yeah. to to any sort of like real human logic. And this and this is particularly distressing for me. I'd really like to go to the fucking U.S. Grand Prix in Austin, Texas, but I'm not setting fucking foot in Texas right now. No, nope. absolutely not. No way, man. Getting 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 my passport and going up to Montreal instead. So there you go. That, that's the move. Look, yeah. they they have guns there, but everybody's not a fucking asshole about it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not assholes about it. Yeah, I mean, like having guns is cool, I guess, but it's the the problem is the culture around guns, which it's they like all I can see when I saw this article was oh, it's the Simpsons episode where Homer gets a gun, where it's, everything, it's, where he just he uses the gun to turn the television like, off. Open a bottle of beer and, and shit like Right, that. like, you know, it's when when you have a hammer, every every problem looks like a nail, right? Yep. And, and that's, that's what's going to end up happening. I, look, I really hope, I mean, we luckily live in a very sane state and our legislature is not about that life. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a crazy governor? No, no. Whatever you want to institute, but some bullshit right wing nonsense. We ain't doing it. Yeah. Um, thankfully, but um, if we ever got a governor, a Republican governor, because it does happen, um, who wanted to pass this, I would like if that passed, I'd be like, I'm out. Like that well, would I mean, be and, and, that and, would be well, my thing. I'm yeah, done. For, for, Fuck for, this state. Fortunately, the state house is so jam packed with, with Democrats. That it it's would kind never of impossible. Happen. Right? It would be it'd be kind of impossible for that to happen. But but, it, but if yeah, so I, I lived I, in a state that was like cool, everybody can have a gun. Baltimore? Are you out of your fucking mind? No, I know. hell it's, no, dude. Every, no every, everyone already does, according to according to right wingers in Baltimore. So, oh yeah, right, yeah. But like, but, uh, yeah, this idea of like not having permits and having handguns is just it's just madness to me. It's but you're, like I said, you're gonna you're just gonna continue to see more and more stories like this coming out of Texas specifically, and there are gonna be other right wing states that have you know completely red. Uh, governments that are going to do the same shit and you're going to see the same shit there. And and the fact that it just keeps on happening with no end in sight, like it's, just, it's, it's, it's frustrating. It's baffling. And, but also at the same time, like it, it's, it's very hard for me to tamp down on the cynical side of me that tells those people that live there. Well, you, you fucking reap what you sow. Like I said, you yeah. vote Republican and you die as a result of, of, of enhanced gun violence. I'm not really feeling sorry for you. Sorry. I feel sorry for the people who are there who not who don't want this shit. Right. Right. But but like but I it, like even even whatever the voting whatever the the voting record is of the parents of that kid, they still lost their kid, mm-hmm. and that's fucking gross to me, man. Like, can you ma- I mean, like. And it's like, oh well, that guy doesn't go to jail because of this bullshit. Does, law. Doesn't doesn't pay any any kind of crime except for maybe you know shame in the court of public opinion. But you know, and I, and that's the thing that I can't get. Like like given the, I I know that you're not supposed to prosecute. No fuck that. You are supposed to prosecute cases based on the outcome. This is this isn't a fucking sports referee. A nine year old died for fuck's sake. A nine year old that had nothing to do yeah. with the situation. That's that involuntary manslaughter. 
It's right. involuntary manslaughter. Go to jail. Like, I'm not saying the guy's got to go to jail for 50 years or whatever. Like, it was a mistake. I get that. But, like, you got to do some time, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Five years, maybe? Like, what the fuck? You, you can't I mean, on, on, on the plus side, I'm sure that the family can probably go after him for, like, civil restitution. I would imagine. Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. It's fucking Texas. It's 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 fucking do they allow bizarre that? world down there. Yeah. <laughs> like he gets to sue them for fucking emotional distress. Your kid right. was in the way of my bullet. Right? Like, I mean, that's the thing, is it's just it's so fucking backwards. It's just so fucking backwards. And it, yeah. it just doesn't make any sense. Um, all right. Next up, um Brazil. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. For now. For now. For now. For yeah. now. Um, Lula uh, Lula wins. Um, he beat Bolsonaro. Um, uh, Luis Anacio Lula de Silva, the former president of Brazil, making a return back to He's the back. presidency. <laughs> he once said in Portuguese, I'll be back. I suppose at some point and he was not lying. <laughs> so, so for those that don't know, um, so Lula was a two term president in Brazil. I, I can't remember if he was Bolsonaro's direct predecessor or if, or if he was, or if he was, before um, him. I will look it up. I'm not sure. But anyway, he was arrested on and jailed, um, after he left office for political corruption. Um, but it was, it was determined by the Brazilian Supreme Court that those charges against him were actually politically charged in the first place. Hmm. And the, and the conviction was annulled because, yes. because that. that was yes. really fucked up that they basically went after him uh, just as, as a political opponent. And they threw him in jail for that specific reason. Um, but yeah, very cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that uh, Brazilians saw the light. Um, oh, I'm glad that they learned the same lesson that, uh, we did in 2020 where, you know, a, you know, one term under a Trumpian style, uh, wannabe strongman fascist is not necessary is, is more than enough. Yeah. And we might not want to go down that route again. Um, it's also good for the world in general, considering that the Brazilian rainforest will hopefully now not be, you know, just left to loggers and shit like that, which yes. Bolsonaro was more than happy to, to sell it off to. God, he sucks. Like, just just an unbelievable. Bolsonaro is an unbelievably terrible guy. Um, yeah, and and he and he tried. Bolsonaro did to basically he tried to like learn the lessons that Trump, like the learn the mistakes that Trump made, and he basically right. tried to get the military on his side in advance of the election, so that if he needed to pull, like if it was really close. Which that which it was like like mm-hmm. uh, Lula only won by like a point and a half, but if it was really it was close, like two, like it was like could, two million votes. Yeah, that he could potentially stage a military coup to hold on to power. Now, surprisingly, he didn't. Uh, um, uh, well, not yet, at least. Uh, right, right, right. So apparently, right wingers in this country, uh, one Steve Bannon, for instance, yeah. um, and many other people are telling him to not concede and to use the military. Um, that's what this article basically drops in like listen man this guy was like oh by the way he was not um lula was not uh the guy right before bolsonaro okay so um he left in 2010 and then i think bolsonaro came in at like 2017 or 2019 like i can't remember i thought it was 2016 something like that but um yeah yeah. um so i look (sighs) It's not, um, yeah, he assumed, uh, he assumed office, uh, 2019. You're right. Um, so they're urging him to basically do a military coup that that's what they want. Now what's interesting here. So we, we've talked a lot about how like the Biden administration has actually done a lot of really smart things on foreign policy, but they, they don't necessarily get lauded for it. Like, especially when it, like the war in Ukraine is probably the most, uh, the most uh, obvious example of how they kind of under like outmaneuvered the Russians when, mm-hmm. when Russia was trying to kick things off. So they, um, I think Macron and Trudeau basically 
within like minutes of the results being called in Brazil, all of them like sent out congratulations, like yep. communications immediately, just to cut, just to, just to immediately head off the, uh, the, the potential for, you know, someone coming out and being like, Oh, I don't know. This thing might be fucked up. Yeah. Biden was very too. smart. Biden yeah. was pretty fast too. Like within like the second, it was like, no, that's, oh. that's what I'm saying. The three, the three of them, oh, Biden, the three Biden of them. Macron yes. and, and uh, Trudeau were all yes. like Johnny on the spot with that stuff. Like, like they basically had, it had like the fucking, but like, like the tweet, scheduled go, tweet, go, 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 right? right? Hit send. And then, and then they, they paged the intern, like hit send quick now. Like they just called it. <laughs> to smack a guy like do it, do it right. now. <laughs> yes. um, look, I think that's smart. Um, yeah. Make the internet, make it look like the international community supports this guy. That makes it a little bit diff, makes mm-hmm. it pretty difficult, especially with Bolsonaro being like, we need to cozy up to, to Israel and the United States more and more and more when Trump was there. Like, all right, cool. Well, the U.S. says this shit's legit. So what happened now? Like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, um, could, you, could you imagine if dipshit was, was still in there with this? It would be a coup. It'd be a coup. hundred percent. hundred percent. Well, just, just imagine his reaction. Like his immediate reaction would probably be like, "Oh, like it's probably fake. Like it was." Probably they rigged stolen. it against Bolsonaro. Yeah. Classic, <laughs> classic Lula. Like classic Lula. <laughs> yeah. Antifa must have flown down to Brazil to steal the election, just like they tried to steal it from me. <laughs> We've been shipping down American Democrats. Have been shipping down Americans to Brazil <laughs> to vote <laughs> in their in their elections. Um, I did. I didn't realize uh, that. Brazil, much like America, uh, had Dominion voting machines uh, down there. They call it uh, D- D- Dominiono, but still the same company. <laughs> Dominiono. He would say that, too. Like, 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 dude, please stop talking. Um, yeah, like. I think if he was still in power, they would absolutely he would absolutely push for them to be a military for it to be a military yeah. coup. Look. We have had like our decades of intervening in South American politics is well documented, um, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, America, yeah, people, 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 people were pointing out the uh, the irony of the U.S. immediately supporting uh, the left, like d- doing their part to support the left wing <laughs> government, really and, coming full circle, South Central American country. So, Re- really going all the way around, like that's amazing. Um, so look, I think it's great. Um, I'm really hoping that Bolsonaro realizes that if he does this, it it will not go well for him. And and here's the thing. Like like you mentioned earlier, Lula was locked up. They mm-hmm. clearly have no problem in locking politicians up. Yeah. Zero. Um I think if Bolsonaro does does this and it fails, and I think that it probably would. You going to jail, like, and it's going to be legit going to jail. Like, it's not. Gonna I, be think, I think. I think the fact party. that he didn't immediately come out in the wake of this and like, st- like, art, like, vocally, like, like, tried to claim that it was rigged or whatever is is helpful and encouraging. He still hasn't actually said anything. Like, he hasn't made any public appearances since since, yeah. since the election, which is weird. Uh, but he did put out a statement. Um, uh, through his communications office that said that ba- he didn't officially concede, but he said that he would begin like the transition to the new, to the new government essentially. All right. Well, that's cool. I, I hope so. he sticks with that, but until that motherfucker is out, uh, like what day do they have to certify the elections down in Brazil? Like, that, that is, <laughs> that's what I want to know. I mean, they, they have, they have the same like lame duck session that we do where it's like two months before the next, uh, the next uh, group assumes power. That's essentially. Mistake. We really need uh, to change that. We really, really need to change it. It's a, it's a yep. really bad idea. Or like, no, nothing gets passed. <laughs> like you can't pass laws. Yeah, you put like a free, you put like a freeze on any, on anything but like budgetary yeah. stuff. Like that's like, the only stuff that's allowed to, that's allowed to go. Yeah, through. you can't just cram in a bunch of bullshit at the <laughs> buzzer. Like, this isn't basketball. You don't get to do a buzzer beater. Like oh, oh fucking. Fuck your rights. I'm out. Like, I, th- I mean, I think it'd be cool. Like if, if the president had a freeze on executive orders as well, like, Hey, like if yeah, you want to get this shit done, like make, make sure you do it before the election, buddy. Like so that yeah. everyone can see exactly, exactly what the plans are. I actually, I don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't care that it would affect Joe Biden. Don't care. Like, guess what? If you lost, then you lost. Like if you won the election then fucking freeze, I can, I can, I can, I can tell you that Trump would probably not have been 
going out there pardoning Steve Bannon and Dinesh D'Souza no, and dude. fucking all these other people if that was the case. No, hell no. Hell no. Well, he would have been like, ooh, you make it under the buzzer? Oh, that's just too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about them. Okay, that's the end of the free portion for this week's episode of Look Forward. Make sure you go to lookforwardshow.com slash premium. Sign up for premium content. It's only $5 a month or $50 for the full year. 